Paraguay? Why go to Paraguay? Why do you move to Paraguay or want to live in Paraguay when you could go to Colombia, where all the women have big tits? Or why not go to like Thailand, where there's all this economic activity? As many of you know, one of my primary flags is Paraguay, and I've gotten a lot of questions from you as to why Paraguay, and in this video, I will tell you why. I am Caleb Jones, this is Alpha Male 2.0. I make a multi six-figure location independent international income while dating multiple attractive women, and I show men like you how to do the same thing. And as part of my Alpha Male 2.0 lifestyle, I follow a five flags lifestyle, international lifestyle. I have flags all over the world. Matter of fact, 2021 is the year for me to get all these flags in place. Now that countries are sort of open from the overreaction, the worldwide overreaction to this cerveza sickness. And I don't know how worse this is going to get. So I'm visiting as many countries as I possibly can this year to get all of that work done. I was recently in Paraguay for a month then Mexico for a few weeks. I'm now back here in Dubai where I live, my primary residence, and tomorrow I'm off to Armenia for two weeks. And as you might expect, I have a very busy travel schedule. But anyway, many of you have asked why Paraguay specifically. I've mentioned Paraguay and I've talked about Paraguay in some of my prior videos. In this video, I'm gonna give you the top 10 reasons why I chose Paraguay over my other options. And I make these decisions very carefully. Uh, when I look at something to make one of my primary flags, I look at lots of different countries, I visit lots of different countries, I look at a lot of data, and I make my decision very slowly and carefully. This is very important to me. I don't knee jerk this stuff. I notice a lot of guys will hear something on the internet and guys will say, go to Chiang Mai, and everyone goes to Chiang Mai. Go to Medellin, everyone goes to Medellin. I don't do that. I do a lot of research, I weigh all the options, I look at the other alternatives, I visit these countries, and then I make my decision. When determining a five flags lifestyle or just an international lifestyle where you have multiple flags or different locations outside of the Western world, you wanna be careful and you wanna take these things step by step. You don't wanna make a bunch of decisions, lock yourself into various different countries, and then find out in six months you don't like it. That wouldn't be very smart. So in this video, not only will I lay out all the reasons I chose Paraguay, you'll also get a good idea from my methodology on how I make these decisions because my decisions in terms of flags is not just about the girls or just about the economics or just about the weather. I've noticed that most guys who move to a new country or spend a lot of time in a country, usually it's one of those three things that are their primary factor and they don't think much about anything else. It's usually the chicks, the money, or the weather. For me, it is a combination of many factors as you will see in this video. Now, to that point, I know a lot of you are interested in the women, so if you watch until the end of this video, at the end of this video, I will give you the key to hooking up with and or dating Paraguayan women as a Westerner. I will cover that at the end of the video. But here we go with the list, top 10 list, a top 10 reasons I chose Paraguay as one of my flags. Now, really quick, before I get to the top 10 list, I don't live in Paraguay. I have legal residency in Paraguay. It is one of my primary flags. I live in Dubai. So for those of you who say, why did you move to Paraguay? I didn't move to Paraguay. I'm gonna spend a lot of time there, obviously. It's gonna be one of my primary flags, primary bases in the world, but I don't live there full time. I actually don't live in any one country full time. My primary residence is Dubai, but even in Dubai, I'm not there 12 months out of the year. I live in international lifestyle. So just to be clear on that. All right, so let's get to the top 10 reasons why I chose Paraguay. Number one, probably top of the list, although it's not the only reason, as you'll see, Paraguay is a remote location. So what I wanted for this particular flag is a backup location. I've mentioned this in prior videos. I want a backup plan to my existing five flags plan. Yes, I live in Dubai and I love Dubai, and the longer I'm here, the more I like it. Love Dubai, no complaints about Dubai, other than little things. You'll always have a little complaints about a few things no matter where you live. But what happens if down the road something happens with Dubai or something happens with the Middle Eastern region or something happens with Europe that affects Dubai or something weird or economic happens or there's a big war or there's a gigantic horrible pandemic worse than the Cerveza sickness. I want a backup plan to my backup plan. And that is this flag in particular, and that's why I chose Paraguay. Paraguay is a little, teeny, tiny, landlocked country in the south part of South America that no one knows anything about. Say the word Paraguay to the typical Westerner, American, Canadian, European, they'll say, what's that? Where's Paraguay? They have no idea what it is. They have no idea where it is. Nobody cares about it. It is in the Southern Hemisphere, which means it'll be protected in cases of like a nuclear war or something horrible happened to the Earth. 
It is very economically remote from the Western world. It's very far away. It's a country no one cares about. Nobody wants to bomb Paraguay. No one wants to invade Paraguay. No terrorists want to blow up anything in Paraguay. It is a remote place that is very, very safe because it's remote. And that's why I chose it as this primary flag. It's basically off the grid or off the radar, at least for a country. And that's pretty nice to me for one of my primary flags. Now my absolute primary flag is Dubai, which is the opposite of Paraguay in just about every way. Here in Dubai, it's, it feels like you live in the center of the world. This is a, one of the greatest economic international travel hubs in the world. It's a huge high tech city. It's a great place to live. I love it. But I want the opposite of that as my backup to that, if that makes sense. So that's reason number one. Reason number two, and this is closely related to reason number one, and that is Paraguay is very stable. It is a very stable country. As a matter of fact, you could argue it is the most stable country in South America or even in the Latin world because there's a lot of instability in the Latin world. But even though Paraguay is often surrounded by instability, crazy Brazil, collapsing Argentina, Bolivia that just had a crazy coup, even though these crazy countries are surrounding it, Paraguay, at least since the 80s, has been very even keel, very relaxed, very low key, nothing horrible happens there, nothing really noteworthy happens there, and again, I wanted stability for this particular flag. For other flags that I'm operating with, stability isn't as important, but for this particular base of operations, I wanted something very, very stable, and it's hard to get more stable than Paraguay. Reason number three, and related to reason number two and reason number one, is that people in Paraguay are very chill. The Hispanics, the Latin culture in Paraguay is the most chill, relaxed of all of the Hispanic slash Latin cultures. These are the relaxed Latins. These are not typical Latin slash Hispanic people who scream and yell and lean on their horns and are very emotional and very passionate and get very angry very quickly and are very loud. Now there's some of that in Paraguay, some, but it's night and day if you compare Paraguay to anywhere else in the Latin world, Colombia, Mexico, Central America, even places like Chile, Ecuador, certainly Brazil or Argentina. These are very chill, relaxed people. And after living in a very hustle bustle, go, go, go environment like Dubai, places like Hong Kong where I spend a lot of time, large Western cities where I do business in the United States and Europe, I wanted somewhere to relax and decompress and go and just, whenever I fly into Paraguay, whenever I fly into Asuncion and I kind of get out of the airport, I just go, Ah, it's just so quiet and nice and relaxing. And Paraguay is kind of my home away from home, my relaxed flag. That's why I wanted that flag. Number four, and this is a big one, Paraguay is very cheap. It is extremely, ridiculously inexpensive. You can get a high-end, nice apartment in Paraguay for four, five, six hundred bucks US. Not bad. You can go to the doctor and get a full physical for $17. You can get a taxi ride across town for three, two or three dollars US. It is very, very, very cheap. So whatever money you have, if you're a Westerner, European, Canadian, American, your money is gonna go a lot farther in a place like Paraguay than it will in most other places, including places in Asia. Are there other cheap places in the world? Yes, there are. There are other cheap places in the world, but this is just one of the many reasons I factored into, Paraguay is very inexpensive. By the way, speaking of free, you get this content for free. So here's something you should do if you want more of this free content. You need to subscribe to this channel. You need to click the dumb notification bell. You need to like this video and you need to leave a comment on this video, even if it's one word, even if you disagree with me, I don't care. The more interaction and traffic and organic growth I get on this content, the more of this content I will provide you for free. Number five of the top 10 reasons why I chose Paraguay as one of my primary locations and primary flags is it's safe. I like low crime areas. I like low crime cities. One of the reasons I live in Dubai is it is either number one, number two, or number three safest city in the world. I don't wanna to have to worry about crime. I'm also married. I wanna make sure that if she visits any of these flags, my wife will be okay. And Paraguay, certainly as compared to much of South America, is very safe. It is at 100% safe, of course not, no. They do have some crime, but even that crime is petty theft, having your handbag taken away on the street, that kind of stuff, if at all, it is very, very safe. I have walked around at night 
in some of the poorest areas in Paraguay and never once did I feel unsafe, never once have I had an incident. I have talked to many Westerners who have lived in Paraguay for years, they've never had a problem. I know a lot of people in Paraguay, they've never had a problem or at least not a big problem. It's a safe country. There are many countries in South America, in the Latin world, that are not safe. Matter of fact, Central America is pretty bad, almost across the board. So I wanted somewhere safe. Paraguay is one of the safest places in the Latin world. Number six, and this was a big factor for me, getting residency and or citizenship is relatively easy as compared in Paraguay to many, many other countries. Matter of fact, most other countries. Matter of fact, if you want a video where I tell you exactly how you can get residency in Paraguay, you can click this video right here where I go through exactly how I went through the legal process of getting legal residency in Paraguay. I am now a legal resident of Republica de Paraguay. I think it's how you say it. Anyway, see, notice I don't speak Spanish. That's another cool thing. You don't have to speak Spanish to get residency. Pretty cool. Now, if you want citizenship, if you want a passport there, it's also relatively easy. Currently, once you have residency, if you live in Paraguay for three years and you're in Paraguay for at least nine months per year out of those three years, you can apply for citizenship. So as compared to most other countries in the world, getting residency and or getting a passport is very, very comparatively easy. Now, notice I said comparatively. There's no easy place to get residency. There's always paperwork and legal BS you have to put up with, and there certainly is some of that in Paraguay. But as compared to most other countries in the world, Paraguay was a breeze. Number seven, I know you wanted to talk about this and get to this topic, the women. The women are hot. Paraguayan women are attractive. Now, let me be specific about this. Are they the absolute busty, curvy, amazing ultra nines and tens that they have in places like Colombia? No, they are not. They're not quite to that level. However, what you do have in Paraguay are women who are really, really cute. Cute to hot faces and nice trim little bodies with big hips and big asses. So if you like big asses, I like big asses. I like big butts, I just can't lie. If you like women like that, Paraguay is a paradise. Matter of fact, whenever I go back from Paraguay to a Western area like Europe or the United States or Canada, I am depressed because I look around and all the white girls have small butts or flat butts, whereas in Paraguay, all the white girls have giant butts. And by the way, that's another thing too, if you care and I don't, the women there are more, much more white skinned. They're as white as me for the most part. They're white girls with big butts. Do they have big boobs? No, they do not. If you want big boobs, you have to go to Colombia or go to Ukraine or Russia or Eastern Europe or places like that. They do not have big boobs in Paraguay. But minus that, Paraguayan women are really, really attractive. A plus. Number eight on the list, and this is related, the Paraguayan people like foreigners. They like gringos, they like foreigners. There are gringos there, there are Koreans in Paraguay for some strange reason I haven't figured out. And the Paraguayan people are very friendly and very open to foreigners. So my experience is traveling around the world, most countries fall into three categories. Countries that like foreigners, countries that clearly do not like foreigners, and countries that don't like foreigners but pretend to like foreigners. An example of that would be Japan. They're very polite, but you can tell they don't like your white ass. <laughs> now, Paraguay is the first category. They genuinely like foreigners. They're not bothered if you don't speak English. They're perfectly happy to help you out. They're extremely friendly. They're extremely open to people who are not of their country. They're very friendly to gringos. And I want to make sure that if I'm gonna spend time in a base of operations in terms of my flags, that they are friendly to foreigners. By the way, it's one of the many reasons I chose Dubai to move to, as opposed to some other places I was looking at moving to, because they're very friendly to foreigners here. Now, if there are flags I'm gonna set up that are primarily for business or finance or investing, then maybe I don't care how they treat foreigners. Matter of fact, I probably don't care how they treat foreigners. But if it's a flag where I'm gonna spend a decent amount of time there, or in the case of Paraguay, spend a decent amount of time and maybe more time as time goes on, as the Western world continues to collapse, I wanna make sure that people are gonna be nice to me there. And again, I'm married so that they're nice to my wife. These are kind of important things to me. By the way, in terms of dating women, what you can do, and this will work in places like Paraguay, is you can get my ultimate online dating manual. That is the most comprehensive book on online dating for men there is on the internet. You can go to onlinedatingsuccessnow.com. That is available now. For a while it wasn't, but it is available again. And that'll show you exactly step-by-step -step how to schedule first dates in any country in the world. It works all over the world. Number nine, and this is a big reason for me, and I'm not sure why I put it as number nine on this list. It should be much higher. I, I'm stupid sometimes. 
That is that Paraguay is economically separated from the collapsing West. I've discussed this before. When the Western world collapses, which it will in our lifetimes, Many countries are gonna be in big, big trouble because they are directly connected to the United States slash Canada slash Europe. There are some countries, like Paraguay, that aren't really connected at all, and if they are, it's very indirect. And as I've said many times, if the United States collapsed tomorrow morning, the typical person in Paraguay wouldn't even notice. They wouldn't notice a difference in their day-to-day -day lives. Because unlike many countries, Paraguay is not locked at the hip to what happens to the United States economy. And again, as my long-term stable backup flag, I don't want a country that is reliant upon the United States or the rest of the Western world to do well because the United States and the rest of the Western world are not gonna do well. They're collapsing right before our very eyes and they're gonna collapse in our lifetime no matter what you do, no matter who you vote for, no matter where you go. So it makes sense to me to make sure I have backup flags that have very little to do with the future of the United States and the future of the Western world. Lastly, reason number 10. This is another woman reason to get you excited. All right, so I know you like these. In terms of the women, they have all the advantages of Latin women without the disadvantages. What do I mean? Latina women are awesome. If you've dated Latina women, you know what I'm talking about. If you have visited or dated women in South America or in the Latin world, you know what I'm talking about. They're amazing, they're fun, they're passionate. They tend to be really good in bed. They're really good kissers. They're fun to be with. They're great, great people. That's the plus side. The downside of Latina women, and I don't like to make generalities, but this is generally true, and you Hispanic men and Hispanic women will agree with me, is that they have a lot of drama. They have a lot of drama and arguments and BS with their friends and coworkers and families and moms and dads and cousins and boyfriends and husbands and lovers. It's part of the culture there. Well, in Paraguay, you have Latina women that are as close to all the advantages of the Latina women, passionate, wonderful, fun, good in bed, all that stuff without the hardcore jealousy, drama, fighting, one-upsmanship, and things you may run into with other Hispanic women. If you've never dated a Paraguayan woman, then you probably don't know what I'm talking about. If you've only dated women like Mexican women or Colombian women, you may have a hard time understanding this. But the women in Paraguay, and a lot, and I'm not just talking about Paraguay, there are lots of other women in South, South America who fall into this category. Many are in Argentina, many are in Chile, but the southern tip of South America, starting with Paraguay. You find women there who are definitely Latina women. They're Latina, no question. But they're chill Latina women, as I mentioned earlier in this video. It's awesome. And frankly, I shouldn't even be saying this because that's kind of a secret that a lot of Westerners know about Paraguay and regions around Paraguay that they don't want me to tell you is that in many respects, these are the best Latina women in the world because you have all the advantages without the disadvantages. And in terms of dating these women, all you need to do is to be a strong alpha male, but not go overboard into strong alpha male 1.0 Hispanic guy territory, where you promise the woman the world, and then as soon as she's your girlfriend or wife, you go and have sex with 20 other women, and then you go back to your girlfriend and you, or your wife and scream and fight and holler for the next 10 years, which is kind of typical in a lot of Latin relationships. All you have to do is be alpha, but not off the chart alpha, and you will do extremely well with Paraguayan women who have all the advantages of Latina women without or much less of the disadvantages. It's kind of perfect. And I probably shouldn't be telling you this because again, it's been kind of a secret, but I love you. I'm letting you in on this anyway because you're my peeps. That's it. Those are the 10 reasons why I chose Paraguay as my primary backup flag and one of my main flags in terms of all the flags I'm setting up in the world. I am very, very happy with Paraguay. I'm gonna be back there uh, very shortly, probably in about a month or two to get my national ID card and some other things I'm working on down there. And in the meantime, if you have any interest in terms of why I chose to move to Dubai as my primary residence, you can watch this video right now, right there. I go through the 10 reasons of why I chose Dubai as my primary residence, again, over and above the other options I had. I will see you in the next video. Bye.